to the Must Have Beers podcast. We're back and we're doing this differently now. No more audio. No, no. You, we, it was a good setup, weren't it? Yeah. We, we had a good, good time doing that. Just the listeners just didn't, didn't seem to want to listen after a while. I think it just got hidden away, so we're trying something different. In the vault. Yeah, we're going to go viral and be all. Yeah, on, so on the right. YouTube. On, on the on the tube. On the tube, yes. On, on the tube of you. Aha. Uh-huh. And so like the, usual. And um, there's probably going to be a button here somewhere. So subscribe, like, like and subscribe. thumbs up. And yeah. Tell your tell your, your mum, your dad, your granny, uh, your dog. Yeah, your fish. Mm. Don't tell them they died. One of mine died yesterday. I'm really upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we doing we do this, new, this new podcast. So we're, we're talking about, obviously... Our love of non-league football. So glad you said non-league football. Otherwise, that just would have come off really weird. We can talk it? about our love if you like. Okay. Love you like a brother. <laughs> After a couple more beers, we can talk more about our love. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I love non-league football. It's it's real one. It's football in my mind. Mm. And I, I I started going. Was it two thousand eight, two thousand nine? Around then, never used to think about it, but. From the minute I started going, I was there, I just, yeah. And like every start of new season, it's the same nostalgia for me. Like I said, every time, I told you this when we went and watched uh, the Benfield game the other week. Um, I don't know where it is, the, you know, the, where it's still slightly warm. It's the end of summer, the yeah, fresh uh, cut grass. Be wet till those uh, dark Tuesday cold yeah. December nights. <laughs> And then it changes a bit, <laughs> yeah. but we, we still go, don't we? But yeah, so obviously it was Bracknell Town for us. Yeah. When, I mean, you you was going a lot longer than me, weren't you? See, I first started back in 2001. Yeah. So literally I've been in love with non league football for like 20 odd years. Yeah. That was the golden years, weren't it? That was the Alan Taylor years. Yeah. Yeah. When football was football yeah. in Bracknell Town, that was the sort of peak. I mean, when that, like I said, when I started going, it was the David Tuttle era, and that weren't quite as successful, really. No, we, we're, we're talking about the joys we'll of Tuttle later, that. yeah. We'll get back to that, yes. Cool. We we'll go back from the first, you know, the, the first memories I had, was obviously, you know, 2000 to 2007, you know, the basically what was cast as the Brattletown glory years. You know, you had some big games during yeah. that time. You know, obviously, you know, people think about the Barnet game, yeah, you know the um, FA Cup fourth qualifying round. I think of that first thing you oh, you think of that game, yeah. But for me, there was other games. There was like the, the smaller games I could think of, like promotion day and the very last day, it was Saturday, you know, to Tuttle and Mitcham. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, it, it was it was our time to get promoted. It was that was the very last day, yeah. <coughs> and I remember. You know, we were all sort of on our phones and, you know, like listening to the radio because you had radios like listening to the radio, yeah. listening to see who was one and then it was literally, you get the signal and that's it, you know. Yeah. We, we won the league. It was literally up to the Southern League after that. And that, that, was, that was a good day. Yeah. Did you get happy on it? We did. I mean, I remember getting the coach with all the players. Yeah. So we went literally on the coach with the players, you know, back to Bracknell and celebrated and stuff. Yeah, I would have we... got an open top bus. I mean, I don't know whether you saw it was a um I think it was a seven aside team that won a, a league over in Dagenham Way, I believe it was. And they got an open tour bus and got it's a parade around the uh, area. I thought it was brilliant. Mm. I wish I'd have done that in my playing. No one knew who they were yeah, but, no, no. but they had a good time. <laughs> but getting back to, to the Proper, the non-league football. It, it's been some proper good eras, mm. and it's been some proper lows as well. Well, that's the same. I mean, the, you know, the, you remember the good, the good times. And there's also the bad times as well. You know, like we went obviously the Bucks and Bucks final. Yeah, got through to that. That was uh, don't have a good day on the coach. There's all of us dressed up, mm. you know, uh, face painted, Ronald McDonald's. Mm. You know, wigs on. There was yeah. there was duds. Like, God rest his soul. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, in a like a Hawaiian skirt and flowers over his neck. And... <laughs> he was a, he was a wild character. Yeah, he? he really was. 
Yeah, it was, that was a good day out. We all went, yeah, it was a good day. And obviously, you know, we, I can't remember the score, but, you know, I remember we lo lost, lost that game uh, to Chesham United. Okay. I do believe it. I believe yeah. it was Chesham United. I'm sure I, you know. You, you've got to get on. Speak to some of the football in Berkshire, yeah, mate. Yeah. They, they are. Oh, good, good friends of football in Berkshire. Yeah. Give them a like on Facebook. I'll get, yeah, they're very good. Their information is brilliant and a great media outlet where they started about two, two three years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Everything you want to know about football in the Berkshire area, it's all over there. Yeah, and uh, they've had um, yeah, yeah. podcasts that have gone on since then, audio ones rather than visual. Oh, the inner pub, but not in a pub. Yeah, yeah. And they, they're all really good. They're great listeners to listen through during lockdown the last year. Well, that's pretty much how. We got the idea of starting our audio. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it brilliant? Yeah, because we knew we chatted quite a lot of rubbish. And yeah. Liked it. As you can yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> so it's the pub within the pub, it's not in a pub. Yeah. We're in the must have beers kitchen. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, yeah, the um, memories to them. I mean, that, yeah, there was quite a few. And then obviously you have, remember the, the cold December, Tuesday, remember it being December the 17th, the Tuesday, oh. yeah, um, freezing cold, and remember beating Whiteleaf 10-0, and that, that was that, that was quite a, you know, a joyous time for us all, we all, yeah. we all sort of cheering behind the goal and getting quite excited. I remember sort of like looking over to Alan Taylor, the manager at the time, and he was like, shh, 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 no, 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 shh, shh, all these boys, shh, we don't want this, we want five, we, we, we want ten, we want ten, yeah, we want twenty. And in the end, you know, after the game, we, we obviously called us all then, we called us all, you know, to the side and said, you know, well, you know, thanks for, thanks for that, but I don't want to, I don't really want to, to embarrass the other yeah, team, yeah. you know, you don't, Make sure you don't rub it in. And he, he literally said to the players as well, you know, don't don't start cheering, don't start running around and cheer. Pay some respect for the other team. So that's that, that was the yeah. kind of guy he was, you know. Just paid respect for the other team. I mean, no one likes to win, you know, lose no three one wants to get a battering, do they? We, we, Especially yeah. ten. <laughs> <laughs> On a regular occurrence when we played we got them. <laughs> and they were never never good were they? <laughs> you really didn't want the next week to come along. But no, I mean, for me, my earliest memories. Now I remember hearing about like the Barnet game mm. and things like that. I said I wasn't going. Uh, but yeah, my earliest memory was I hear was Keith saying that you know David Tuttle was signed as manager at Bracknell Town, and he said we we should all go. So we was like, oh, go on and go, and we got us all up ready Saturday. Up at like 10 o'clock, out the door at 12, straight into the pub for a few two minutes. Like thorough refreshments. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, lying refreshments, yeah. Then over to uh, the football club, watch that. And then Bratner were really, really poor, like really poor. They had um, my mate Dean's nephew, uh, Ryan, Ryan Wells. Not a bad player, got released from Arsenal. And um, Dave Tuffy. Tuttle took a chance on him and went, yeah, we'll take him on. And he was a striker, but he was about the same size as me in height, and I'm five foot three. And Bracken Town was trying to lug balls up long to him, and you're yeah. like, come on. Now, he's two foot nothing. Yeah, he's not going to win. <laughs> the balls he is going to win, he's not going to do much with. He, and it was that type of football that was, it was yeah, they didn't need a midfield. They, they they could have put four up front and four in defence and that would probably I mean, be he, he signed about 90 odd players that season. He did, yeah. You know, every week there was a new player. Yeah. You know, and none of them were good. No, no. And then there was nearer to like the end of the season, he, he actually brought in a couple of players from Reading and one of them was a end up being Michael Hector. That's right, yeah. He's got on to have, have a yeah, you know, a bit of a career. He signed for Chelsea. He didn't really play at Chelsea. He played for Reading for mm. a few years. Played in a FA Cup semi final against Arsenal um, a few years back. And there was 
it was him and there was a goalkeeper and I remember the you know, Bracknell got absolutely trashed in the game, like usual. I mean, what, they win two games in the whole season. Two games in the whole season. We yeah. was there for them too as well. <laughs> those, those are two glory days. Yeah, yeah. We actually got drunk that night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they bought us a drink. It was a own goal, but still. Yeah. But uh, they, like, the goalkeeper was, he, he had the right arm at the end of the game. Oh, I remember. And he two, just yes. dropped on the, on the pitch. And Dave Tuttle made all the uh, players go around and clap, like the fans, which was actually generally just us lot, Dean and Tash, <laughs> and their kids. And um, the goalkeeper refused to go and do a lap around the pitch and clap us. And I remember Tuttle going absolutely gutty and he was literally telling me you weren't ever going to play football ever again. I don't know whether he ever did <laughs> because I've, I've never seen him since. We only really knew about. I don't him. think he really has that power. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, well, he's been to a lot of clubs since, so he stopped him going there. <laughs> but I just, yeah, that was my earliest memories of of the non-league game. As such. I remember the days of Tuttle where he was we were stood there behind the dugout and he literally turned up. Boys, you first you go next week, <laughs> bring your boots. And he was literally going to sign, sign us yeah. up. Like I think at the time, if I was fitter, I probably would have gone for it. I'd be, yeah, go on, good today. Well, if I can have a beer while I'm playing, I'm, I'm fine. Technically, I think my level would have been about the same as how they were playing. I wouldn't have mm. said I was the same level as the opposition because they, they were beating them by at least seven goals nearly every game. But yeah, if I was a little bit fitter and I could have run back then, I probably would have taken his chance and gone, yeah, why not? Let's see what <laughs> happens. That could have been my football career. <laughs> but no, instead we uh, we, we decided to, to take normal average jobs and uh, try doing podcasts and things like that. Mm. Make others laugh. But yeah. So uh, what else has been going on in, in the round the long league world? Was it about um were you talking to me about that young that young lass uh oh, at Benfield, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I will try to find her name. Uh Chloe Street. She was the club media executive. She's been selected to uh work within Eurosport and kick out Raise Your Game programme. So massive congratulations to you. Congratulations, Chloe. yeah, yeah. Um that's a massive achievement. Also Benfield, if you're now looking for a new media executive don't look at us too, because we're probably not that good, actually. No. No, no I mean, I'm reading off the tablet. But, yeah. As always, on the fly. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> With a penny out of the pound. But, yeah, uh, also, we've got, if you mentioned Benfield, you've got to mention uh, that Asapovic, um he's been recovering from a, a condition that's mm. been affecting yeah. his lungs, and he was basically, like, house-ridden for seven months. But he did manage to uh, get on in the game at Wembley. In the, uh, sub, didn't yeah, build a base uh, FA Bars uh, final, which I can see why. I really could. It, 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 if I had that opportunity to play at Wembley, I'd you know, just leg would be in half. I'd be like, strap out. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, so well done. Hope for a proper speed of recovery and, and you uh, get back out playing soon. He's also a carpenter, so he said that his work has got to be his main focal point. Mm. Um, yeah, he loves football, but he's, he's got to keep that in his mind. Well, that's, that's the thing. That's, that's the thing with like non-league football. I mean, you'll find that the players you're seeing every week they've got normal jobs. They're yeah, like yeah. us. Yeah. You know, they're working as like you said, carpenters, builders. Yeah. Warehouse, you know, working in your local Tesco's or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just like us. Just enjoy the game, and they're yeah. not getting paid. Mega money because no. you know, in, in the games where we're watching on TV, you know, like the likes of you know Arsenal, Leeds, yeah. you know, where there's Chelsea, money money's about yeah. There's there's huge amount of money. I mean, I I remember explaining to uh, Dean about this because Dean's a Liverpool fan. He loves Liverpool. He, he since I've known him, he's never watched a game at Liverpool, but that's that's his preference. Where he wants how he wants to support the club. But um, when I was first going to watch Bracknell Town, I was like, I can't just go watch him. He was trying to tell me it's rubbish football. He went, it's, it's, it's crap. And I was like, it's not crap. I 
I said, these were on the speedways, on the football. And um, the way I tried to explain to him, I said, if you go to Liverpool, you buy a Liverpool shirt, have a couple of beers and what have you, that money don't affect Liverpool, to be honest. The, the money's already mm. there. You go to your non-league clubs, your Bracknell, Binfields, Ascots, Maidenheads, you know, the lower leagues, anything really from, you know, League One downwards, you go to them, you're actually helping that club survive because they haven't just got, you know, players that pay. A lot of staff are voluntary, but they yeah. still have running costs, electricity and all that lot. And it, it is very draining. So they, they, they need that support. So there's me, I always say, go watch your local non-league team because you're going to probably have a better day out anyway. Uh, win, lose or draw, you always have a good time. That's, that's the thing, but obviously back during the, the, the pandemic, yeah. you know, um, these lower leagues, lower teams, they were struggling. Mm. Of course, there wasn't any games on, so they're not getting the gate receipts, yeah. which means they can't afford to pay their players, which means they can't afford to, what do you say, pay the electric, pay the lights, yeah. so you have to close down. But then you have your, your bigger teams, like, it's fine, you know, they've just, they've got multi-billionaire companies believe, and people just chucking money at them. believe what made it worse for a lot of fans, like, you know, I am an Arsenal fan and, yeah, I know I'm wearing a Northampton shirt, but I just really like the shirt. I am an Arsenal fan, and it disgusts me how they, um, they were playing, pay, play, uh, paying players, you know, up to £300,000 a week, but the normal staff that do the average jobs in and around the uh, stadium and in and around the club, they were getting furloughed, so they weren't getting their full mm. pay. And I, I stood there, now I personally, I've been someone that has been furloughed, and every now and again I still get the odd day where I'm furloughed from work, and it takes a hit out of me, it really does. So when you see yeah. a club like that, and a, a company like that do that, you do go, kind of question marks, and you kind of lose that faith and a little bit of love for them. I'm generally disappointed with Arsenal most of the time now, anyway. So, but on to, on to back to non league. Sorry, <laughs> back to non league again. Back, back, back on. So, uh, what's been going on? Binfield, they've they've done all right. They've uh, they've won one against Northwood, lost two. One of them was against Basingstoke. We went and watched that game. It wasn't a bad game. It wasn't, wasn't a bad, a bad game. game. I don't think. Binfield was outclassed, but there's got to be something quite resolute about Basin State because they're top of the league at the moment and showing good form. They lost against Bracknell, and as we know, Bracknell Town is now the club with the money behind it. So they're probably one of the favourites of going up, if you've got to be honest about it. I mean, I know we're not too pleased with how the club is run. No. But we will get into that a little bit more, a bit later. Um, so yeah, Binfield, they, not the greatest start, but not bad. Um, Ascot, they play away today in the FA Cup, um, first qualifying round against this Hive Town. So best of luck to Ascot. They, um, they're a nice, really nice club there. We went there during the, the second lockdown, wasn't it, when you were allowed to go back? Yeah, we went for pre-season mm. against was it Harlow or something like that? Wasn't Harlow. It? Yeah. Yes. So um, they did look, they did look good. And they were just redoing their clubhouse as well. Um, I went there this um, pre-season uh, when I watched uh, Ascot against Binfield, and it was really nice there. Uh, and the clubhouse is lovely. They always treat you really nicely as well. You're not just the person that's turning up paying money. Uh, and that, that's that's the beauty. I think that's a beautiful league as well, where. You know, you're made to feel like you're yeah. important. You you walk through the door, hello, how are you? And you're made yeah. to feel like you're part of the day rather than just taking your, taking your ticket and yeah. here's your beer. Yeah. You're made to you feel part of the day. Yeah. And I think that's probably why, like you said, we've, we've moved away now from Bradford Town because... So, yeah, so it's obviously less of a... Like a a community. community. Yeah. 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 So it became more sort of revenue based, basically. That's it. And I, I get it in some ways because they have to make money to keep on surviving, but there's kind of a, a 
different feel to like um, I don't know, a bit of a grid and sometimes it always felt as though the first team wasn't the the, the main focus mm. the, the main focus was going to the academy which is okay to an extent but my idea was if you've got this international academy why do you why would someone from Canada want to come here to play for Blackman Town? Yeah, yeah it's they're, it's, it's they're it's using it as a stepping stone yeah. as such. And for their careers, it's obviously better, but for when you're on the ground and you're part of the, the, um, yeah, the, the fans and you want the team to do well, and you know, we weren't like Blackman Town are doing well, and then we've got to release it. Okay. Oh, yeah. And there's definitely a, a different sort of atmosphere there with the ground yeah. and, and with the club. But uh, yeah, I, I'd happily wish them the best and hope they do well. Um, as you can see, Matt's a really good barman and he's, he's sorting out another beverage for me. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always, always uh, enjoyed going to watch normally football. And like I said, when I went to um, to watch Asuka with Dean. It was such a it was such a good day. It was really nice in there. They treated you well and they yeah, you felt part of part of the community and as though they actually went, Oh yeah, got more people coming in, it's better. Well, it felt it's better for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, and then they literally like when we were there. Yeah. They said, Oh go back to our bar and have a beer with yeah. us and I was like it was the atmosphere, it was the community. They weren't just trying to kick you out straight after the kick up, straight after the final whistle. Or at some clubs, you found that. Um, Binfield, when we went there against Basin State, that was a that was a really nice. It's a lovely ground to go to. It's a bit of a walk though, isn't it? Yeah. From, from that part, that, that was a bit of a trek, but it, it was worth it. The beer was a bit ropey, but. A bit like these ones. Uh, yeah, yeah. Didn't you get them from the same place? I can't work <laughs> these battles, mate. <laughs> you could have left it there, and I'm sure I could have worked oh. it out. The first two do come out a little bit lively. It's the last two that don't. But, um, yeah, you want to play? You want to play it with that? Oh, do you want to play it? You want to play it with that? So, yeah, so, um, does anyone know how Windsor's getting on? Because that's a, another local club that we'd like to keep an eye on. See, I, I, I keep an eye on them on the, whoa, uh, yeah. on the socials and stuff, you know, and Insta, but they don't really seem to post much. No, no. I mean, I don't think, I, I don't know whether, are they in the same league as, as Ascot? I believe so. And Wokenham, and yeah. Because I know Ascot beat Wokenham the other day, didn't they, in the league. That was um, a good result. Never actually keen on Wokenham, so less about it. But yeah, it's so obviously yeah. on a on a last note. So, what games are we planning on watching this season? Uh, definitely want to get to um, Maidenhead. Yeah, they've they've made a real strong start this season. Um, they've yeah they've won two. They lost one against uh, Weymouth, but uh, they've got a good setup. Alan Devonshire is a manager. He's quality, isn't he? I mean, most West Ham fans would turn around and say he was an absolute golden generation mm. player. He was a, a really good player. As a manager, he's absolutely fantastic. I wish him all the best. They're sitting six at the moment, and they got a real gem. Someone that I remember from his Bracknell days, Sam Barrett. And I believe he had a sibling that played for Bracknell as well. But we'll find out about well, that. Well, South End as well, he? He did. He mm. go to South End. It didn't quite work out for him. Um, he had a real horrible injury in his first season. He had two seasons there. Mm. And I had a change of manager. Sol Gamble was manager for a bit. And then I'm not sure he took over after that. It was a bit of a club in a bit of um, bit of a mess mm. as such. But he's found his way back at Maidenhead. And yeah, he scored two goals in two games this season. He was, it is. I mean, last season he scored um, 15 goals in 29 games. And you got to look, that's some form. And he's actually, a, he's a winger. And he's not, so, yeah, centre forwards would take great shape like that, don't they? They'd have the other. So uh, he's, he's a good player to watch out for. So I definitely want to get to yeah. the league. Should we get to Ascot? Should we get to Ascot? Another Binfield. 
I'm happy to watch being filled for most of the season as well. There's a large pub on Rupert as well. So. Yeah, yeah, there is a nice yeah. pub, yeah. Um, Staines, have you tried Staines? Yeah, I've had some Staines for years, but yeah. Yeah, please so do Stains. that. Another one that I really am impressed with with what they're doing is a, a club called uh, Dial Square. Now, I believe they're in combined counties. Yes. Um, they they originate from Arsenal fans that have got the um with how Arsenal's run, which fair enough. You might get a game. I doubt it, but um, <laughs> they they really have a a really good plan. They their idea is they they play over by Chelsea at the moment, and they want to work their way up through the through the pyramids. And they want to get them. Um, to where uh, Arsenal originally started in Woolwich, which is it, you've got a plan and you've got a goal, go for it, just go. Um, I believe they have a, I don't know what term it is, he could be a technical director or something like that, or club ambassador. Um, he's uh, an ex Arsenal player called Ian Selly. Oh, right. Yeah, do you remember him? Little midfielder. Yeah. He, um, he won a cup winners' cup with Arsenal in '94. And, uh, he, uh, yeah, he's uh, an ambassador or something like that, and they're actually thinking about giving him a bit of a run out. And uh, there was a um, a video that was sent to their uh, social media feed from an Arsenal fan. I can't remember who, what his name was. Sorry, people, I should know. Uh, he did say about it. He said, "If you're thinking about giving Ian Selly a bit of a run out, just be a bit careful. He, he's carrying a little bit, so I I hope he's not carrying that much." And, even if you are, I'm sure you can do a diamond job being Sally. I mean, I still get around a pitch all right, and I'm not, I'm not a stick thin, am I? No comment. No. The camera adds £10. No comment. No, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, so a fair few games this season we're going to get to. Definitely. So we have now officially become groundhoppers. Groundhoppers, yeah. The groundhoppers. Groundhoppers, yeah. Uh, non league groundhoppers. Yeah. So here's to that. Yeah. Cheers to you. And cheers to you. Cheers to you. Thank so, you for watching. And remember to uh, like and share, thumbs up and like and subscribe. Yeah.